This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at kansasgrainsorghum.org. Welcome to Farm Factor. Up first, Kyle Bauer visits with David Clausen about the devastating Starbuck wildfire. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer. I'm visiting with David Clausen, uh, just past president of KLA. Um, but on March the 6th, he was in the area where the Starbucks fire uh, that was in the Clark County area, um, his ranch was involved with that. We're going to get an update. Uh, David, after the fire, um, how, the summer you got more rain than you would probably have ever hoped for. Yes, uh, we had 30 days of blowing wind in March, which we usually do. But by uh, the last week of March, the rain started. We had 60 days of rain of almost 15 inches. Our annual is usually around 18, so we got that in those 60 days. We got ground cover. Things grew, and, and it's just been incredible to see that whole process come in and stop the ground from blowing. Now, it's my um, generality is that north of Ashland, the ground is is heavier, darker, blacker ground, and south is more what I'll call sandy ground with a lot more mesquite and brush and that sort of thing? Yes, that's correct. So uh, the closer you get to the Cimarron River and, and Big Sandy Creek and all those, you're going to have a lot more sand. So south and southwest of Ashland, it is much more sand. The recovery of that uh, ground will take a lot longer than north of town. Uh, the harder ground, we're seeing quite a bit of recovery of grass, and, and we're just tickled for, for, to see that. And I'm sure we killed some undesirables, which was a big help that was needed anyway. But when you get to the sand, a lot of the ground just has sagebrush and, and uh uh, ragweed is about all that's come up but we're tickled it's covering the ground and the grass will come it's just going to take a few more years so there probably was almost no stocking rate on any of that ground this summer very little grazing very little uh, you have to remember most of the fences were burnt out so we really weren't in a position to really put cattle back and then a the lot of cattle lost so we we weren't in the position to even buy them at that time so it was more of just a position of getting fences back and people are starting to look to uh, add cattle back now, uh, now that the fences are up and, and stock. So, but where it has burned, uh, I think most people are about half stocked this summer where they were able to get some fences up and start and they were able to eat some weeds and things like that, but lightly stocked. Now, what about winter? Is there still a need for, for hay or was there uh, forage that was able to be grown this summer for winter um, feed? There's probably adequate grass that has grown for winter feed. Uh, we already have the stocking rates way down, so uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. Other than our normal hay that we usually feed, uh, I don't think there's need for additional. We, uh, we're so blessed with all that was given us. There's some people that still have a little bit left over that will use that this winter. Been visiting with uh, David Clausen, former president of Kansas Livestock Association, about the Starbucks fire and the recovery in that area. This is Kyle Bauer reporting. Thanks, Kyle. Folks, come back after these messages for this week's Kansas Soybean Update. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways, of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. 